Okay, so here we are with a how-to video, and this how-to video is going to follow on from the last how-to video that we did, which if you cast your memories back, the last how-to video that I did was the one on gluing nameplates onto a locomotive, which basically was partially a redone version of the how-to I did last year on glue, on renaming and renumbering a locomotive. But if you remember that video again, I did say that I was going to redo that video again, only in separate videos. This particular video is going to be a how-to on renumbering a locomotive. So this is going to be the renumbering section. I know it's not the same locomotive that we used in the one on gluing nail plates on a locomotive, but there you go. And this locomotive, well, you can tell which one it is, I don't really need to tell you. But it is the E4 from Batman, of course, which the review is now live on YouTube. And if you haven't seen it, then go and do so. And so this locomotive, it has been detailed. or oh, a piece of coal has fallen out the bunker there. Because it has been given real coal in its bunker. The brake pipes have been added. Uh, this is a little vacuum pipe or vat bag, whichever you call it. Chain link couplings have also been added. That one has come off the hook, <laughs> if that makes any sense. I'll just loop it back on there we go. It's back on there. It's getting off a bit of dust and also I have glued the brake pipes on the front as well as that vat bag. As you can see there. Tightening coupling and also the smoke box door darts and handles have been well, sorry, smoke box door darts and bands have been painted silver, which make the loco stand out. And when those parts are painted, they do stand out. And what I'm going to do? Oh, that piece of coal has fallen out of the bunker again. I'll just have to glue it back in later with some drop of glue. So this locomotive is currently numbered 473, which is the preserved example. However, it's going to be renumbered into. 475. Again, I, I am. Well, I do think there was a 475 in reality. There were 75 of these built, so that is quite possible because I can't imagine them just having a loco numbered 473 and not having a 475, so it is quite possible. But, in this, that's not important. In this video, I'm going to show you how to renumber a locomotive. Right, so first of all, you're going to need the locomotive, obviously, that you're going to renumber, which of course is the E4. You're also going to need some soft thing to lie it on, which is basically this is the homemade loco cradle turned upside down, and I've only done that so it's got something nice and soft to land to sit on. Because otherwise, if I just lie it down on here, I don't want to damage the model in any such way. So that is the reason why I've lied it down on the back of this loco cradle. You're also going to need a cocktail stick, although I've got a pair of them here. But that doesn't really matter. Now we're also going to need the transfers, of course, to renumber the locomotive. And the transfers I'm going to be using are made by Fox Transfers, which I do recommend them because they are brilliant. And also, these are the correct transfers, which are the Mortal numerals, which are the correct ones for the E4, because it is best to get the right transfers, because then otherwise it just will not look right. Now, there are other companies out there, but if you get a company like HMRS, which is what I did use originally to renumber this locomotive, then HMRS transfers, I'm sorry, but no, they just don't do it for me. They are terrible. They are not very good. They're too thin, so they roll up and they fold and they tend to get crinkled more easily. And also, when you apply them on a locomotive, it's almost as if that the transfers are see-through because you get marks on the numbers. Almost as if there's, like, there's water behind them or something that soaks through the transfer, which doesn't look very good. I will confess. 
So fo Fox transfers are better because they are thicker. The HMRS ones, they're too thin and they cause many problems with them. Even when you when the transfers are put into the water and they float off the transfer paper, it's hard to get them back on again for those reasons. But anyway, you also get some, with this pack you get some coach numbers as well. And you also get lots of little letters as well, like A, B, E, W, which can also be put on the locomotive. But anyway, I mean with HMRS transfers they are cheap, so it probably isn't any surprise why the transfers aren't that good. I mean these are these are cheap as well but they are a little bit more than the HMRS ones but you know I'd rather pay that much for these transfers knowing I'm gonna get good quality transfers than ones that are not so good because the Fox transfers are brilliant in my opinion so I do recommend them because they are really good it's not just the transfers it's their Etch name plates as well, they do really well with those. But anyway, so there's the transfers. You are also going to need some tweezers, a pair of scissors to cut the transfers out. The tweezers are there to put them in the water and lift them out again. You're also going to need, I'll just get that dish to one side because I don't need that. You're also going to need a bowl or a dish of. One water, but we ain't got that prepared yet. And also, you're going to need the stuff that you're going to use to get the transfers off, the original ones. Or should I say, to be more precise, the stuff you're going to use to renumber the locomotive to get the original numbers off. Yeah, that sounds better. And I'm going to use this product here called Brasso. And I'm using this because I've got nothing else to use. And the other reason I'm using it is because... I know this stuff works. If any of you saw that how to video on renaming and renumbering a locomotive, you'll remember that this stuff did work. It worked when I was renumbering Silver Fox, which was formerly Golden Prover, and that worked well. And so I've got no doubt about this not working. I am just shaking it about a bit. It's just something I recommend. But anyway, let's get started. You are also going to need some tweezers, a pair of scissors to cut the transfers out, the tweezers are there to put them in the water and lift them out again. You're also going to need, I'll just get that dish to one side, because I don't need that. You're also going to need a bowl or a dish of warm water, but we ain't got that prepared yet. And also, you're going to need the stuff that you're going to use to get the transfers off, the original ones or should I say, to be more precise the stuff you're going to use to renumber the locomotive to get the original numbers off yeah that sounds better and I'm going to use this product here called Brasso and I'm using this because I've got nothing else to use and the other reason I'm using it is because I know this stuff works, if any of you saw that how to video on renaming and renumbering a locomotive you'll remember that this stuff did work it worked when I was renumbering Silver Fox which was formerly Golden Prover and that worked well and so I've got no doubt about this not working I am just shaking it about a bit just something I recommend but anyway Let's get started. Right, so first of all, we're going to remove the numbers that we need to remove. In this case, it's going to be the number three. As you can see. <laughs> that rhymes. And so what we're going to do in this little lid... Oh, crikey. Powder. Coming off it there. So just going to pour some of it into the lid. It might be a bit too much but there we go and we're going to use a cocktail stick the reason I'm using the cocktail stick in particular is because well it worked well last time the question is now will it still work I'm assuming it will 
I hope. He said. So what you do, you dip the cocktail stick into the stuff you're going to use to renumber it. Do excuse that. And what you do is just rub on it in a circular motion. I should point out this will take a while. So I'm not expecting it to see come off straight away. But it will work. Yeah, it is starting to work. I just remembered we're going to need some tissue as well to wipe that off. Silly me. Never mind, I'll get some later. Yeah, that's, this has actually come up pretty quick, actually, because I didn't expect it to, because the last time I did it, it didn't come off this quickly. Okay, it looks like the number three has been removed, so I'll just quickly get some tissue. Well, the man gone. We don't need to. Stop everything. I got this old cloth. <laughs> it's a bit big, I know, but it should still work. Oh, yeah, look at that. We just need to touch that up a bit. Do be careful though when doing this, because you don't want to rub the lining off or any other lettering. There we go. That's pretty much done. Although there's still a few small bits there we can remove. There we go. That is now done. So there's a bit of dust there on the loco. So that transfer removed, it's now basically just number 47. Right, so what we're going to do is I might as well show you doing the other side. I wasn't planning to originally, but hey. You can rub it up and down as well. But yes, do be careful with the lining. Now you got the dog barking. I'm sure there are other substances out there to use, but like I said earlier in the video, I haven't got anything else to use. I don't really want to go out and buy anything else when I know I've got something that works. Because it costs money. But this still does the job, as you can see. Might not come off straight away, but hey. It works. Right, so we're going to make a start on the renumbering. So, I've got a tub of warm water. 
which has got fairy liquid in it because that's something that Fox Transfers recommend which it helps to get the adhesive off it's even so I mean it, it still can come off even without using the washing up liquid but you know It says here in the instructions, as you can see. So there we go. I mean, when it comes to varnish and the transfers, which you will need to do, it doesn't mention using Humbrol because they don't recommend it, but it actually does work well. I've used it before without any problems, but there you go. I mean, you don't have to use the brand of varnish that I recommend, but you know. Okay, so here are the numbers. Um, I know in the video earlier I only showed you removing the five, but I have since removed the other numbers. Because I thought, well, why not? It will make the most of these transfers, being they cost money. So we're going to cut the transfers out. So we've got two number fives that we've just cut out. So I'll just put them into the dish. Or should I say tray in this case to soak. And the good thing as well with Fox Transfers, with HMRS they print them backwards, which isn't very good. And also with Fox Transfers you do get a lot more numbers on here. So if you make a mistake then you've got plenty more to do but with HMRS it's a different case. So that's another pat on the back for Fox Transfers really at the end of the day. But that's just my experience with HMRS transfers so I don't I wouldn't personally use them again. But that's just me. And that's my opinion. So there's two number sevens. So now we're going to need two number fours. Obviously, one for each end. Might as well just show you this bit. Cutting them off the transfer paper. There we go. Then, since they're two together, just cut down the middle of them. So then of course they get separately. Oh wow, that one actually just flicked into the dish there. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> so we'll move the packaging out of the way that we're not going to need. And the transfers can go to one side for now because we are still going to be using them. We're not done with them yet. Oh no. So I'll we'll leave them to soak for a good few minutes and then we'll come back to them and do the renumbering. Well, it's been a good few minutes now, so the transfer should have slid off the transfer paper by now, or they should at least be ready. It's not going to be easy though, lifting them off. Well, I've got one. So of course being it's 
going to be renumbered to 745. The 5 goes on first. So it goes here. And any excess water on the model or on the transfer, just get a cotton bud or some tissue. Either one works best and just slide it into place. And also it is relatively important that you do get the transfer in the right position. Right now the five's now in place and let's get the other transfers on. And I have moved the camera over. Because I can actually now reach the little dish that transfers in properly. So here comes a number four. And again, any excess water, just dab it off. Right, where we are, so that's the number four. It's also important to try and get it in the right place as well. So then here comes the number seven. Again, excess water that we don't need or want, I should say. Just dab it off. Come on. Also another idea, try and get the transfers level with each other. You know what I mean, like so one isn't higher or lower than the other, but that is pretty much correct. Okay, so now as I said earlier, one of the little bees there is rubbed off, but thanks to Fox Transfers, you do get some of them with this decal sheet. So I'll just pop that into the water. But I need to cut one off because it's only on the one end. Where that has happened. Alright, so now we're going to do the other side of the loco. I know it's the same side, but still. I'm going to do the same side anyway. I'm 
nearly forgot where I put the tweezers then. Silly me. Right, so, same procedures as we did before. I mean, picking the transfers out of the water is my least favourite thing, but, you know, it's got to be done to... get the transfers on the model. Yeah, that's basically right. Well, more or less right. Um, actually, that's no, slightly far back. Well, actually, no, and um, of course, it's going to be slightly different on the other side anyway. Silly mate. Trouble is, when this transfer slide off the paper, it's not so easy to get them back on again. But that's not a fault for Fox transfers, it's not knocking them about. You know, this can happen with any brand, really. It's just for the number seven. There we are. Yeah, sometimes that does happen. Right, there we are. That's that part of the renumbering done. Uh 
let's get that little bee put on. There we are. That's now on. Let's just zoom in on it. Right, there we go. So, now we've got to do the next part of the renumbering. Right, so it appears one of the bright pipes has come off. Great. That's another job for me. I'll put it back on later anyway. You know what? They're actually pretty much, I'd say, the right size. It's a different colour, I know, but it is the same size. Oh, let's focus there. Looks slightly bigger from up there, but trust me, it is from my angle pretty much more or less the same size. It, okay, well, it is slightly bigger, but it is close to that size. But I prefer it that size anyway, and that colour, in my opinion. So, what we're going to do now is Put out some more numbers for it. I know you can't actually see me doing it, but I am doing it, trust me. We've also got to get a little B cut out as well. So even if they are coach numerals that are meant for coaches, they can still be used on this locomotive. Because I actually do like the colour of them. Not that there's anything wrong with the other colour now, but I was just pointing it out. And we've still got to use some of these for the buffer beam on the front. But those will be used later. We are still going to need the brass arrows, but we'll tip it back into the can for now and we'll put the lid on. Because you don't want it to dry up and you don't want to waste any. But so now we've got to let the transfer soak in the water. Even though the water has gone cold, it can still be used to get the transfers off.
we we'll have to move some of them transfers over a tad, but it's looking good so far. Actually, I might not have to move the transfers over, it should be alright. Because the thing is, the reason I'm doing this is because it, it will look more realistic. Because if you have a locomotive, you renumbered, but it still has the original rumble on its, on its bunker or even the buffer beam. It's not going to look very realistic, and in, in reality, if that was to happen, it would cause a major headache for the rail enthusiasts. There we are. That looks good. Right, so now we've got to do that front buffer beam. I will glue that brake pipe back on later. Right, so now we've got to repeat the process. But I won't show the renumbering of this bit on camera, I'll just do it off camera. So the bees on. And that's another thing I like about the yellow rods, and you can actually see it from from where I'm standing. You can't actually see the original writing close up. Well, no, sorry, you can see it close up, but you know what I mean. Well, you have to stand up close to notice it well. If you stand back a bit, then you can't really see it. Or probably at least it's not as well as you probably could see it, but mm, there you go. But that itself has no effect on the model, it's just one of them things. Thank 
actually getting a bit windy now. That's the four is in place. You actually can't really see it from this angle. If I just turn it, then you can see it. But it is there, trust me. Number seven on. There we go. So the renumbering is now done. Well, I'm just putting this in the video. I've had to make one correction, or two rather, off camera. And it's the numbering on the sides of the tank. So there's a hair under the chassis there. I'll just take care of that. There we go. Now the reason I've had to make a correction to the number is because, as you can see, the numbers on both sides of the tanks is 475. It's also that number on the bunker and on the buffer beam here. However, during the actual renumbering, I numbered the locomotive to 745 rather than 475, so I had to go back and correct that. I don't know why I didn't notice it on camera or why I didn't realise that afterwards I don't know but I will put like an annotation thing in the video anyway when this gets uploaded but that's just quickly explaining that because I did say something in that video about confusing the train spotters with different numbers and what have I basically gone and done off? Well, in reality, this would have confused them. Quite. That's not really realistic to have a locomotive with two different numbers. But either way, that's just quickly clearing that up. Right, now what we need to do is put on some gloss coat varnish. Now, the stuff I'll be using is made by Humbrol, as you can see here. It's Humbrol Clear Gloss Varnish. 
Now, if Fox don't recommend you use it, at least not the, it's not mentioned in the products they recommend. But I recommend you use this stuff because it's quite good for this. I've used it before for renumbering locomotives, and it works just as well as any other stuff. And also, I'll be using a cocktail stick for this. You don't have to use a cocktail stick to put it on, but I am going to. Because I don't want any excess varnish on the model. That's basically why I'm using a cocktail stick. And in order to use the cocktail stick, we've got to pour some into the lid. I mean, this stuff is new. I just got it a few days ago. This varnish. I'm only going to apply it onto the big numbers though, on the side of the tanks. I'm not going to put it on any of the smaller numbering, like on the bunker and the buffer beam, because after all, I am going to be holding the model where the side tanks are. Yep, there we are, the varnish has gone on with the cocktail stick, that's why I've tilted the model slightly. So we are going to spin the model around. It's not going to ruin the varnish, don't worry. I'm just using a cocktail stick because I don't want to spoil the model much. Okay, so that's it for the varnish. So I'll just pour the excess back into the tub. Because you know, this stuff costs money and you do not want to waste it. Waste is haste. A rolling stone is worth two in the bush. But anyway, the renumbering of this locomotive is now done. We've just got to let the gloss coat varnish to dry, and that's basically it. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you renumber a locomotive. The varnish is now dry on the transfers, by the way. So overall, I'm quite pleased with this. It's come out quite well. Or very well, I should say, actually. Get rid of some of that dust. Um. Well, that's just a thing on the side, I thought that was a bit of dust then. But yeah, I am actually very pleased with that, how that's come out. Like I say. It's come out really well. So that's all there is time for today. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you again soon. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video on how to renumber a locomotive. <laughs>